Okay, how you doing, boss? Hop in. Rides on me, all right? Listen up. Let me tell you something. I just watched the new Joe Rogan's three-hour episode with Palmer Lucky, so you don't have to. Palmer's life arc in 10 seconds. Teenager builds Oculus, ships it at 19, sells to Facebook, gets rich, gets bored, and decides to fix America's defense mess with Andrew. No drama, just tools and hard choices. He's obsessed with immersion, float tanks, VR so convincing you forget your body. And he actually started prototyping headsets at 14, launched Oculus as a company at 18, and worked in the Nerd Hall of Fame with John Carmack. Beat Saber and VR boxing? Not just a party trick. Palmer argues VR is serious training. Fighters and athletes use it for timing. Robots can be trained to spar, and you can build robot opponents tuned exactly to your skill level. Also, robot fighters that don't look human are smarter designs. Humans are terrible blueprints if you care about survival. This is where it pivots. He founded Anduril because he thinks DOD is wasting huge cash and building brittle systems. His thesis? Build weapons that can be mass manufactured in existing factories. Keep costs down and actually arm allies fast. Example, their Barracuda cruise missiles use 90% fewer parts and can be made with automotive tools. That's not sexy PR, that's industrial resilience. He calls the company mission to save taxpayers billions, but also to make allies fight for themselves. Be the world's gun store, not the world's police. China's the looming problem. Palmer's blunt, civil military fusion plus massive industrial scale equals a real strategic advantage. China can build port and ship capacity, automated missile lines, and even design civilian ships to military specs so they can be pressed into service. If you kill our car industry, you limit our wartime manufacturing. That's why he runs China 27 as an internal assumption. Prepare as if an action on Taiwan could come in that window. His practical view? Don't send US boots everywhere. Sell allies good kit, keep stockpiles, and make it producible now. Autonomy changes tactics. He explains the FQ-44 concept. AI fighters, loyal wingmen. Cheap and expendable platforms that can do maneuvers a human pilot would never try because the risk calculus flips. Swarm, sacrificial strikes, perfect distance control. Robots can touch, not hurt. Pull punches or commit kamikaze moves to open a corridor. That's not incremental. That's a whole new air combat chapter. UAPs and weird stuff get a big chunk too. Palmer skeptical but curious. Lots of footage is single sensor or easily spoofed. Crowds with drones amplified sightings, but some multi-sensor events are genuinely odd, like the Hellfire footage that was presented in a hearing. He wants better, funded, unbureaucratic teams to chase this. His private x file fantasy. Deputize, bring sensors, follow leads without paperwork, killing the mission. He gets nerdy. Interspecies communication x prize. Uplift theories. Alex the African Grey Parrot, and using AI to decode whale and dolphin signals. Palmer thinks AI plus massive data could crack animal languages, and even force us to revisit wild ideas like uplifted species or different timelines. He's comfy mixing sci-fi with engineering, and honestly treats both as lab problems. Politics and procurement lessons. Palmer's worldview blends libertarian tech optimism with weirdly old-school defense realism. Don't outsource national security policy to corporations. Let private industry compete to build stuff, but keep policy decisions accountable and democratic. He's also candid about being an early Trump supporter and why he worried about hawkish promises like no-fly zones. To him, those are red lines that risk escalation. Hardware flex time. Eagle Eye, 
Anduril's integrated AR helmet is the product demo. Modular sensors, phased array hearing that can beam steer footsteps, ballistic rated AR glasses, mission shields that swap in filters for lasers, and a wild idea. Combine battery, compute, radio, and ballistic plate into one rear plate to save pounds and space. Solution thinking. Don't strap a brick battery to a soldier's back if you can make the armor do both jobs. Also, they took over the messy IVAS program problems where big vendors lagged and actually iterated quickly. Ethics bluntly, if you care about how weapons are built, don't sit on the sidelines. Work on it or risk letting less scrupulous folks do it. Palmer says he's not in defense for the money. He could retire. He's there to change how the gear is made and who controls it. He collects gear, tests stuff, and wants weapons to be transparent, manufacturable, and effective for allies. Bottom line, this is a VR guy turned defense industrialist who talks about float tanks and parrot linguistics, then hands you a new helmet that can see through walls and make your squad a hive mind. He's paranoid about China, pragmatic about allies, bullish on autonomy, skeptical about UAP hysteria, but curious and dead set on making military tech cheap, scalable, and manufacturable. If you want the TLDR, build simple, build at scale, arm friends, don't start wars for PR, and yes, VR boxing is a real workout. That's it, boss. Meters off, stories told. Like and subscribe if you want more of this. Catch you on the next ride.